As everyone knows, we at the Designated Drinker Show are dedicated to raising the bar on craft cocktails. And now, now we need your help and just a little bit of your time. We'd love to hear what you think of the show and to find out what you want more of and even what you don't. So please head over to designateddrinker.show to complete our listener survey, because what you, our loyal listeners, want is exactly what we aim to deliver. I promise it will only take a few minutes of your time to complete the survey, and for doing so, you'll receive an exclusive invite to our Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour, a live online interactive event with me and Gina. We'll be serving up some fun times as we try to answer your questions, deal out a few fun cocktail facts, and of course, share some good laughs. All while Gina doles out her tips and tricks as she shows us how to craft three, yes, three amazing cocktails. So head over to designateddrinker.show, dish out your thoughts, and we'll see you at the Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour. The date and time will be determined by survey participation, so go do it today. And hell, share with your friends, family, clergy, postal worker, dog walker, I don't know, anyone you know who appreciates a tasty cocktail and some intoxicating boozy banter. You know we can't wait to hear from you. Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Solis, and with me, as always, is my very, very talented friend. She is the mixtress, DC Gina. Hi, Louise. It's nice to see you. Snickerdoodle. Yeah, snickerdoodle. I hate that cookie to see (laughs) I don't really know what a snickerdoodle tastes like. I think it's just it just sounds funny. Cinnamon cookie from Pennsylvania. Oh. (laughs) So, I'm basically a sugar cookie with some cinnamon to you. I just thought it sounded cute. (laughs) I'd rather be like a peanut butter, chocolate s'more, Rocky Road kind of cookie. Yeah, like, my that's fa- fine. My favorite cookie is a peanut butter cookie. I'll take but without I'll, chocolate. I'll though. take the plain cookie. It's fine. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> but it's got a cool name. I'll just be over here mopping up after Louise. Hello. It's fine. It's not a problem. I think a Snickerdoodle is a cool name. That was why I picked it. Anyway. I don't. Know. I don't know. We're gonna ask our guests what they think about Snickerdoodles okay. when they get on the show. Absolutely. I think it's just a, it's a throw it's a throwback cookie. So. But we all know it is, tis the season of cookies, right? It is. It I is. do love that. And, you know, apparently we Americans have a true love affair with these scrumptious little tasty treats. Um, yeah. <laughs> because according to research, over a lifetime, an American, an average American, will eat approximately 35,000 cookies. Perfect. Perfect. I'm on 70,000. So we're good. <laughs> I'm well, not even halfway through my lifetime. Well, apparently, also, we love to share these cookies. Yeah. Yeah, Cookie with good swaps. Old, yeah, and good old St. Nick. Do you know that um, every Christmas Eve, it's estimated that, I don't know how they get this, but it's estimated that the jolly good old fellow enjoys, get this, 336,150,386 cookies on his sleigh ride. I want his job. <laughs> as long as you're not serving me snickerdoodles. I put that in my rider. No snickerdoodles. snickerdoodles. Or no gifts. It's up to you. I don't care. No, did. No, did. Never again. Never again. But I'm thinking that's an awful lot of cookies. It's a lot yeah. of dough, huh? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, gifts are a lot of dough. Yeah. Well, no, I wonder how that tradition even started that you gave uh, a treat to this person that broke in your house to give your kids gifts. It's crazy. That is crazy. Like, yeah, you're going to, it's, uh, it's breaking and entering. <laughs> I understand the spirit of St. Nick, and then I don't know how he turned into this person that you have to feed cookies to. That's cool. Um, I guess maybe just, you know, maybe sweeten the deal. Hopefully you get a little more. It seems like a very American way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was seeing Nick, I'd like put a 50 under the, the tray and we'll talk about it. Anyway, uh, anyway, keep going. So all these cookie crumbs, if you will, lead mm. me to today's designated drinker. Uh, and I'm sure she can tell us a little bit about cookies. I'm sure she's baked one or two in her lifetime. Um, she is the founder and CEO of Mrs. Joe's Petite Eats Patisserie and Cafe and a past contestant on Fox Network's Crime Scene Kitchen. She is none other than Chef Aaron Roth. Welcome to the show, Chef. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me on today. Well, we're so happy to have you. So do you have a favorite cookie? And what's your feeling about the snickerdoodle, which apparently is very controversial, and I just didn't know. <laughs> Um, I don't have a favorite cookie. It's not too many cookies I do not like. Um, uh, the Snickerdoodle to me is like a, a bougie version of a sugar cookie. Oh, that's my problem with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bougie version. You're trying to sell me this, this cookie. <laughs> yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying to upsell me this fancy cookie that's just a sugar cookie. Well, yeah. And really, 
I don't need that. And don't try to tell me to give it a great name. A snickerdoodle to me has melted Snickers on top, making a doodling deliciousness, maybe with some cream in between two, and now it's a sandwich. What? Now that's a snickerdoodle. <laughs> well, it sounds like you just created a new cookie. I think I think we should. I think we I should. Think we should, we should as well. ban the word the use of snickerdoodle. And well, that's it. I'm glad on this show that I <laughs> that Gina has once again redeemed me and made snickerdoodle a good thing. When I didn't know, I just thought it was a cool name. I honestly did not know what a snickerdoodle <laughs> was, but now Gina's made it good, and that's exactly why this show is good. I love that you called it a bougie sugar cookie. Yes. <laughs> Finally, that somebody shares my focus on the cookie. <laughs> So I want to get to your experience on being on a reality baking show. But first, will you tell all of our listeners how you got your start? Because I know you didn't start as a chef, right? No. So um, I'm from Mississippi, and I grew up surrounded by the original Iron Chefs and, and those type of chefs. So uh, the original Farm to Table movement started in the, in the South. And so I saw these men and women create some fantastical things in down South. Your reputation is based upon how well you can cook. As I've said before, if you're asked to bring the ice or the sodas, that lets you know where you are in the hierarchy of cooks, the chefs. And so I was not asked to bring ice and drinks. So if I was I was usually asked to bring a dessert. Desserts are my passion. And so um, before I retired from the Army, I decided I was going to start a business just to keep busy post-retirement. And so I'm that kid that would call their parents. At that time, they were retired, you know, two or three times to check on them. And I remember calling my parents in November of 15 and said, hey, mom and dad, I think I'm going to retire I'm from the United States Army and I'm just going to, you know, do cupcakes and cookies on the side. <laughs> of course, your mom, your mom, your mom is like your biggest fan. So I was, sweetie, whatever you decide to do, you will be successful. And unfortunately, while she and my dad were on vacation, about four weeks later, she passed suddenly. And so that was in December 15. And so, wow. you know, mothers are like the center of the family orbit, the family universe. We all orbit around our mothers. And, and so we are operating a new normal. So as a tribute to my mother and a legacy that she had on myself as well as my siblings, I decided to name my business after her. And it's Mrs. Joe. So Joe is my mom's name. So it's eternal tribute to my mom. So Miss Jo is my mom. It's not me. It's my mommy. That's awesome. So. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. No, but it does. It, obviously, um, she instilled an awful lot in you to be able to, like, to carry that torch and to really honor her in, the, in, in your next life. I mean, as in your, your, after your new career and your many years in service. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She, she, was, she was definitely, um, you would have loved her. She was the person. <laughs> You didn't want to, if, if you did not want to hear the answer to the question, don't ask her the question. And so my mommy, my mom was a straight shooter, but you know, hey, you know, there, there was not any, any. No angst, no ambiguity. Yeah. She was, you knew exactly where you were coming from. Exactly. Yeah. You knew where she was coming from, but uh, she was just, she was awesome. And she just taught, taught us so much. She, she, she used to tell my brothers, because um, my parents didn't believe in gender or it chores. They believed in everybody should know how to do everything. And so she would make my brothers watch her cook. And she would say, boys, you better come in this kitchen and learn how to cook because you may marry a woman <laughs> that can't make steam. And I was like, <laughs> you know, see, in my mind, awesome. I wanted to ask my mom, what does that mean? But of course, you didn't, you know, I was like, what does that mean? As I got older and I understood, ah, okay. And so... So my brothers are, are great are great cooks as well. And um, so, yeah, you know, my, my father taught us how to change a tire, you know, taught us how to nail. So it's, it's like our parents ensure that we were very well-rounded. That's awesome. <laughs> People That's- don't do that anymore with their kids. They don't, um, they don't force them into, like, learning anything. Everybody now, this generation... Well, you know, we didn't have a choice. Neither did I. <laughs> we didn't have a choice. <laughs> we didn't have a choice. I feel like we're doing them a disservice by making everybody extra um, extra padded. You know, it's like, oh, don't worry, mom will do it. It is. I, and I, I truly agree. I think we're setting setting kids up for, for failure because, you know, little things like there's some kids that don't know how to iron their clothes. There, there are children that don't understand that, that chicken and fish have bones in them. And so... <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm serious. You know, kids been eating nuggets all their lives. And so 
Yeah, so I grew up in Mississippi, and my grandmother had a farm, so we saw them, you know, with the cows, and saw them kill hogs, and we saw the true form of table experience, and I remember as a little kid, they were, because when you kill a hog down south, it's a community event, and so I remember, you know, I was running around, wasn't really paying attention, I think I was about five or six, and I ran to my, my big mama's house, that's when my dad's mother, we called her big mama, and I ran to the kitchen, <laughs> I, you know, ran to the kitchen, and on top of the table, in a number 10 metal pail, was the head of the hog. And I screamed, ah, and everybody came and running, what happened? And they were like, oh, God, just the hog oh, yeah. Like, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know, they killed the hog. So, but, yeah, so, um, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, and my mother, she, my mother used to make, she, my mother made everything. And so, you know, we didn't have, like, store-bought cookies. She would make the peanut butter cookies with the crisscross with the forks. Yeah. You know, and coming home from school, when I, we would get off the bus, you could smell the cookies. That, oh, my God. And so, yeah, my mom used to make, she used to make her own, well, make us the uh, homemade jams and jellies. And I thought all jellies tasted like my mom's until I was in school one day. I was like, oh, what is this? This is not like my mommy. So, <laughs> to this day. I, I really don't like store-bought jams and jelly, so. Hence why you opened your own store. Well, yeah, and that's one of the, and we will be coming out in this spring with Miss Joe's Jam, Jellies, and Relishes. My mom made pepper sauce. She made barbecue. She made everything. Talk about, let's, uh, I want to hear more about your place. What? So talk about, so Mrs. Joe's, where is it, first of all? Where is it? We're going to be located in the uh, Pentagon Federal Credit Union Corporate Headquarters in Tyson's Corner, also known as McLean, Virginia. Awesome. And that's yes. the first of one, right? I, I like how you think. I like how you think. <laughs> yes, it is. It is the our first, first of one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is definitely our first brick and mortar, and uh, we, we are truly blessed to be in that location. Um, Penn Fed, you know, is taking a chance on us, and they, they believe in, in what we can do for that location. But, you know, we're, we're bringing something different. Um, we're going to be a patisserie and cafe. We know we're going to serve uh, breakfast and lunch. And then we're going to have other options like catering. Uh, people can do take-home dinners. And eventually, once we open, we'll do um, Saturday brunches. And so we want to definitely bring something to the community. Uh, we also be able to do cakes and stuff for people, like celebration cakes. So you can order your child's birthday cake and pick it up on the way home. And so we're just offering the employees and then the surrounding community, you know, a, a different way of looking at things. And of course, everything is from scratch. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I have to say about living in D.C. versus growing up in New York. Like, you, there's no bakeries here where you really can just walk in other than the grocery stores and, like, buy a cake. You have to order it, know you want it. I mean, like, you know, in New York, you just walk in and you're like, oh, I forgot my kid's birthday. I have, like, 27 different kinds of cakes. And you can, like, pick a cake and they'll put the name on it and... It's delicious because that's what they make. You know what I mean? Yeah. I welcome something different for sure. Where in Mississippi are you from? I'm from a little a little hick town called Enterprise. It's on the <laughs> east coast of Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, but uh, it's it's about ten miles, ten to eleven miles south of Meridian, Mississippi, right off of Interstate Twenty. I know. Well, we drove from ten, from from Tennessee to. Um, New Orleans. To, well, no, to Bay St. Louis. We went, yeah. to, we went to Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Yeah. To do mm -hmm. a podcast like a couple of years ago. And oh, I have wow. to tell you, that was the greatest. When you talk about like the pastries, we stopped at two places <laughs> that we were reading about. We're like, oh, we're just going to go and have their, um, I believe one of them was a pound cake. And we literally stopped for pound cake because it was like on, right? Is that when I hit? Yeah, that's when, that's, that's when Louise hit a car, but let's not talk about it. <laughs> Um, in a rental car. <laughs> in a rental car. It was ridiculous. It was so funny. We like hit, like we tapped the car and like, of course, a pound cake in my face. And I'm like, I'm like, just go. <laughs> well, and I didn't know damaged because it was that big pickup truck with that giant yeah, bumper. Yeah, no, there's no damage. <laughs> I was more concerned with, is the pound cake going to be okay because it has the icing on it? And we want, because it was hot and we're like driving and we're bringing this now as a gift to my friends. Well, I mean, the truth was the damage is already done to the car. There's yeah. no worry was going to not change what had just happened. <laughs> I was really concerned for the sweets. Like, really. So, you know, we all have to have our priorities, and she was right at that time because I it was already done. Save the cake, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Save the cake. Oh, Save my gosh. It should be like a tagline for you. Save the cake. 
<laughs> yes. But you currently, you started off as um, more catering, correct? Like doing corporate well, actually, or personal? I, I, or how did that happen well, you, for you in COVID? Well, see, it was ironic. My mom had to say, if you want to hear a guy laugh, tell him your plan. And my <laughs> initial plan was to just do desserts because um, desserts are my passion. And I was doing a corporate event for a, um, a corporation in Reston, their grand opening, and they had uh, hired me to do their uh, dessert uh, table. And then they uh, called me about a month out and said, hey, Aaron, do you do heavier d'oeuvres? I'm like, hmm, I do now. And so that birthed, <laughs> yes. that birthed our corporate catering. And I'm so glad that I, was, I wasn't I was stuck in, you know, in one, one, one thought process. And corporate catering definitely uh, helped to expand our bottom line tremendously. And so we do corporate catering as well, as well. That's awesome. But that's how you got your start, right? Like kind of how you established yourself? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, people got to eat. So what made you do a TV show? I <laughs> know, right? That's funny. <laughs> so, again, if you want to hear a guy laugh, tell him your plan. As <laughs> most businesses like myself, uh, the pandemic, you know, hurt. It, 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 it truly hurt. Um, it definitely stopped a lot of things that we had planned to do for that year. And I almost quit. I, to be quite honest, I just almost <clears throat> folded the business. But you know, my stubbornness and my mom's name wouldn't let me do that. And so we hung in there and I'm so glad we did. I'm setting the groundwork for how I got on the show. And so um, in March of this year, uh, you know how you have your Instagram and we were still posting on all our social media things we were doing. And um, I got a DM from quote unquote, someone calling themselves to be a casting agent. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, because you go, I know for me, I get a lot of interesting DMs on my Instagram. <laughs> and so I was like, they was like, hey, Aaron, so-and-so saw you on Instagram. Would you be interested in doing a show? I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> so I and it was early in the morning. And I saw like, ah, whatever. Something, and it kept nagging on me. You need to check into it. And so I called my girlfriend, who's an actor in Atlanta. And I was like, hey, I got this DM. Tell me what you think. So I shot it to her, I screenshot it, and she looked up the company because she's an actor. So they have access to different databases that you and I don't have access to. And she was like, girl, you better call them. They've done Big Brother and all that. I said, are you for real? <laughs> and so she said, well, just put me on the phone, uh, you know, dial me in and I'll be your agent. And so I called her back. Well, she's an actress, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and she's my best, and she's my best friend, Stella Brown. And so, um, I called her and I was like, you know, and she was giving me the spill and she didn't tell me the name of the show just yet. She said, but it's a baking reality show where you and, a, and a, your partner have to come into a kitchen and ascertain what was baked based upon what's left behind. So do you know anyone that could do this? That could, you know, and I was like, well, yeah, my, my, my friend's from pastry school and she's a, you know, she's retired Air Force. And she was like, well, do you think she'll, she'll love, do that? I said, sure. Got out the phone. I called Amanda, and I think I said, "Amanda, I promise I am not playing. This is for <laughs> real, for real." And I said, "I said, would you be interested?" I said, "It's gonna be a quick turnaround because we had like less than three weeks to get ready." And she said, "Sure." So the next day, next Friday, we called and and she talked to Amanda. That Monday, we did our audition tape, and we made it to the first round, second round, third round, and got the call about four days prior. We flew out on two April to L.A. So we made it. Yeah. And I tell you, I have a whole new respect for cooking shows, baking shows, just that whole TV and movie industry, because it was a grind. Um, it was sort of like the military early mornings, late, you know, late days. And and it's, it is just a grind. I mean, there is no, you know, relaxing or whatever. But I, I truly have a new new respect for how that whole system works is. Um, you know, it took us two days to do one show. And so that was just, you know, but uh, uh, it was a great experience. I definitely, you know, I, I miss Joel and, and, and everybody else. And it was just a great time. It was, it was hard. It was uh, mentally and physically exhausting, but it was a great time. It was a great when does time. The, when has, what is the episode number? It, has it aired? Yeah, the first episode was um, right before Memorial Day, I think May 26th. And uh, the last show was in July. So, yeah. Wow. And we made it to the semifinals. Yeah, we can definitely That's amazing. We'll put a link on that. I, have, I, haven't, wa I haven't watched that. You haven't watched that show? No. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Would you do it again? Erin, would you do it again? Whew. 
<laughs> well, you know, I probably would because it's definitely I I kind of understand TV world and and the and the the concept of the show a lot better, obviously. So yes, yes, I would I would definitely do it again. Well, that's good. I mean, the first time you're totally naive, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. And if nothing else, you end up in the middle of it going, oh, my God. But like afterward, to say you do it again, that says a lot. Cool. That's good. Yeah. You know, like I said, thank God for the editing, because I said a lot of words I did not want to repeat it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, Kim's my best friend. <laughs> that's OK. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, you know, you say, say what you mean, mean what you say. So when yeah. you're when you're in the thick and you're like. You're like F. It's it means something, you know. <laughs> Sometimes that av- that little adjective, verb, however you want to use the word, has a lot more meaning, for sure. Yeah, my mom. My mom calls it speaking a little French sometimes. So you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Your mother would be. Your mother had to be a wonderful woman. Obviously, I mean, nuts don't fall far from the tree. But yeah, she no. sounds like she was an amazing woman. <laughs> yes, yes, she was. She was. So, do you have? Any advice you would give other small businesses, especially, I mean, you started like it, it, like one of the most inopportune times, you know, like in during a pandemic, your timing. But I mean, it obviously it's crazy how to think about it, even at this early point that it did. It did work out. It did. It is going in the right direction, even though you started a very difficult time. Uh, Do you have advice for other small businesses? Oh, I have many. I have many pieces of advice. I would say listen to those who've gone before you. Don't make the same mistakes they made. If you're going to make a mistake, be creative in your mistake. (laughs) But for me, you know, you have to research what you're going to. And and bottom line, what solutions are you providing? And so you have to you have to have a solution, you know, whatever you're doing. And so. um, So realize what you are and then research, 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 research. There are a lot of free type of programs for you to attend, to go to, to ensure that you can um, ensure that your idea can come to life. And if it does come to life, can you sustain, can it grow? And so, yeah. Uh, second thing I would say is be prepared for the hardest job in your life. Um, if, if you're lazy, if you have to be, a, uh, if people have to kickstart you, if you if you procrastinate, then maybe entrepreneurship and small business ownership is not for you. Yeah. Uh, because it's going to be grueling, um, and you have to work. It's going to be the hardest job you've ever worked for, and you're working for yourself. I would say also too, um, manage the level of expectations that you have from family and friends. And I say that I love my family and friends, and not all, but. There are some that don't have your vision and they won't have your vision because it's your vision. It's not their vision. They cannot see it because God didn't give that vision to them. He gave it to you. And so they may not be as happy as you would be. Uh, so don't take it personally. Just keep keep working hard and keep going forward. But just manage the level of expectation of your family and friends. And ironically, be prepared that some of your biggest supporters and advocates will be not from your family and friends. It will be from strangers and customers and clients that you have met along the way. Mm, that's good advice. Sounds like a story of just staying open. Erin, what you just said about 100% about you have to, you're a business owner and you have to like realize it's your vision and you have to provide that vision for everybody to be on the same page. That is 90% of the problem with a lot of people, because you keep it all in your head or you think that like you deserve the right to sleep, 100% ain't gonna happen. <laughs> sleep, what, what's that? Listen, what's I, what's a, I had the most trying weekend? weekend of my life. I'm still here, I'm in my, in my track suit, but I made it. Right. So, and like I, and I didn't want to, I tried, I tried to get out of it. I was like, I, I can't do it today. And then I was like, and then she pep rallied me. Well, you know, and, and you're right, because there's going to be some days you're going to be like, what's your why? What's your why? Do you know your why? Do you know your why? Because, and uh, getting back to crime scene kitchen, I asked the agent, I said, well, how did you find me? And she said, it was your hashtag. And it was a hashtag called Veteran Baker. And again, 
that hashtag came into fruition during the pandemic. And had I quit my business, had I given up, I wouldn't have had that post that had that hashtag and for that agent to see it months later. And so that's why you, you can't give up. You don't, you don't know how close you are to where you need to be if you give up. So don't give up. You work too hard. Mm. You know, just, yeah, it's, it's not going to be great. Like I said, being an entrepreneur is probably one of the hardest jobs, you know, you are the hardest job you'll ever do that and the most you'll love. So, yeah. That's some good advice. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't have it any other way. Aaron, I'm going to give you some good advice right now. Let's get some cocktails going. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I just got, I was like, oh my, I'm listening, listening to you and I'm thinking. I'm ready for you. Oh, I'm it's so cute. You. All right. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite drinks. Uh, it's a very simple drink, but it's a very nice drink. And, the vanilla um, was because you're a baker, right? Yes. And I think that there's no other ingredient more important in baking in general than um, the vanilla bean. It's so precious, so versatile. It's both aromatic and flavorful. It could be spicy. It could be sweet. But it's, it's, it's almost in like, yes. I would guess to say 50% of, of sweets, if not more, globally. Which, think about this tiny little bean made it around the world for all of these right. um, uh, dishes. Right. All right. So we are going to make um, basically a flip, a vanilla flip, right? So you need um, your lemon, you need an egg. And if you are vegan or don't want to use the egg, you don't have to. It just gives it a lot of body, the egg white. So I, I really, I love it. And we're going to actually make this drink with vodka. So we're gonna use an egg white drink. So if you've listened to this show before or have ever um, made egg white drinks, you all know that you have to combine the egg white in a very specific manner. The egg is egg whites are delicate or eggs are delicate and you can't put it directly into lemon juice or anything like that because it will curdle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, first we're gonna put our simple syrup into our shaker tin for one and a half ounces. So this is a vanilla simple syrup. So it's made with about one, it's, so it's one cup of sugar per every half vanilla bean. So I make this in two cup batches and it's got a really just beautiful flavor. So we're gonna do one and a half ounces of the syrup. I'm gonna pour it in. And now we're gonna crack our um, egg into the smaller side of your uh, tin. So that way if you drop any yolk or shell in it, it doesn't ruin the vanilla syrup. So now we have our um, yolk and I'm gonna actually make two drinks in here. Gina, do you find, do you, have you done this using your chicken eggs? Yes. Do, with a super fresh egg, does it change anything as uh, opposed to a store-bought egg? Not with alcohol, I don't think. I think the fresh chicken eggs, though, are just divine. Yeah. Um, so we're going to combine our sugar and our egg white first, right? So we're going to give this a little shake. A little dry shake's going to happen here. We're gonna go back and do it one more time again. Cause that we, if you can see in here, and I don't know if you can see in there, it's already frothing. And yeah. now you're basically making this like um, meringue. So now we're gonna do, we're doing two drinks again. So we're gonna do one ounce of lemon juice per drink. And now we're gonna add our one and a half ounces of vodka per cocktail. Okay. Now you can use gin or, you know, whatever you like. Um, I little birdie told me that Ivaca was a fave here. So yes, it is Aaron's fave. <laughs> so I, it's so versatile, right? All right, so now we're gonna dry shake again. So put it on nice and tight, pick it up, dry shake. Dry shake means you don't put ice in it just yet, okay? And then we're gonna shake it, and now while you're dry shaking, you can serve this drink um, on the rocks up if you can do it as a um, like a sour style. We're gonna do this one. Um, up for us. Cool. Sure. <laughs> I'm still shaking it dry. I have two cocktails in here, so I need a, a little extra time. Okay. So i just doing two at once, so hang on. I'm gonna chill my glass real quick. And I'm gonna show you the top of this, because this is what we're trying to achieve, because the entire drink is all about this pre-shake. And this is the reason why they use flips and stuff inside up. Here you go, look at the top. 
It's the reason why they do like flips and stuff inside blenders now to like increase the time and everything like that. I really should have worn um, an apron today. <laughs> or maybe I should just sleep in general. All right, so we're gonna add our ice now to chill the drink. But the drink is almost made. Cap it again. Now you can really smell it, right? It smells yeah. like a little puff. Oh, it does. It took a little longer to get to me, but that's beautiful. There's a new candle from um, Yankee Candle. It's so ridiculous. It's called um, Lemon, I want to think it's called Lemon Chiffon. I swear to God, this thing smells like it. Anyway, look at that froth. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what you're looking for. That's what this whole drink is about. It's just about this beautiful meringue froth on top. And when you achieve that, it's way better than a snickerdoodle. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have uh, learned that a snickerdoodle is a no doodle. All right, Aaron, I want to see it. Let me see it. There we oh, go. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Good Jeff. job. Cheers. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's strong. Good Lord. Wait a minute. <laughs> you follow my recipe one and a half ounces of vodka, one ounce of lemon juice, one and a half ounces of, of, of vanilla. I did. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is strong? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to bring yourself into my bar. Yeah. yeah you need to come here yeah. and, and have a drink with me. I'm a, by oh, the yeah, end of this, you that drink's too sweet. It's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> it's like a little Ooh. cookie is strange. Yeah. <laughs> good. I think that's good. Woo! Ooh, dog, this is, I, I think I was a little more heavy-handed, but I, 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 I use my scale, so... <laughs> A kitchen scale. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. I gotta use the, you gotta use the jigger on this one. <laughs> you need one of these little guys. Ooh, ooh, well, there ooh, you go. That's yeah. one way to start off the day. A little lemon zest, little, 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 little kick to get you going. It's happy. It's happy hour somewhere. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Right here. So, Gina, where are they gonna go to get this recipe? Um, you're gonna go to designated drinker dot show for the tips, tricks, how tos, how to make my um, lemon meringue cookie. I think I called this one Sweet Dreams. I think you did. It is. It is like blissfully sugary. And, and like, here's my favorite thing about this. If you have a torch and you want to get like super creative with your friends and press them, you can uh, hit it across the top and it will, oh, like it'll meringue. meringue. Oh, beautiful. There you go. Oh, it's nice. Beautiful. I love that. Oh, this is, this is, this right here is a good base. You can add any flavor of vodka to this, any type of. <laughs> it's a sugar I cookie. I think about limoncello. <laughs> yeah. I Ooh. love limoncello. I make limoncello, but not this, not yet. And my oranges will be coming. Sorry. Well, I do orange jello and lemon jello, but I get um, lemons from Sardinia. And not yet. I'll get Ooh. them like in another like week or two. So if you want to play limoncello, oh, wow. I'm in. <laughs> I cut back my ever my vodka and lemon peel with vanilla syrup in order to make my lemon cello. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. Oh. Do you yeah. think that is gifts or do you just? I used to make it and, and give it as gifts when I worked at um, PS7 a long time ago, but like. It's when I first met you. We made so, we use it so fast that like, and I don't, and you can't get the lemons as frequently, well, especially now, but um, I just, I, you know, I just sell at the bars. Oh. It's terrible. I become that person. You'll see, Aaron. You'll be like, oh, I used to give everybody jam, but now you can come buy it at my store. <laughs> you like what? the electricity hey, in that's... here? Buy the jam. Yep. You want air that's, conditioning? You laughing. You laughing, but that's what we're going to do. If, if we serve it, we're going to sell it. So, yeah. That's right. So what kind of cookie would you put with this uh, cocktail, Aaron? Ooh. Uh, you, you, well, for me, I think because it's so strong, you kind of need more of a simpler cookie. You, you don't need anything that's going to... Um, you know, a simple cookie, a sugar cookie would, would, would work well, I think, with this. Or, or any type of, like, a lemon shortbread would be nice, mm. I think. Um, a shortbread yeah, would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah, something a little dead, something that won't um, muddle the palate. You don't want anything. Yeah, t then that's just my opinion. I wouldn't even do chocolate. I would keep it simple. Nice. I would keep it simple. Yeah, no chocolate. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Although... I've really come around in my old age to like really start liking orange and chocolate. 
old age, whatever. I <laughs> used to hate orange and chocolate. And I went to all the places you're supposed to go in Paris, everywhere. I'm like, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And I just recently had something that was orange and chocolate. I'm like, oh, this is lovely. They're like, of all the people, you've complained about orange and chocolate since the day we've met you. I'm like, yeah, now I like it. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, orange and chocolate. To me, that is that is the only citrus that goes well with chocolate, I think, is orange. And I yeah. used to hate it. And now I'm like, mm, it's kind of good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've come around. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Gina, I think, uh, I think it's all you now. All right, so um, in this day and age, and this is, you know, we're, we're coming to a close of our this year. We are. Um, people, you know, identify themselves with a spirit animal and, you know, and they really like, they really hold on to it. And you might identify yourself with a snow leopard because they're a survivor, they're rare, they're beautiful, and they really take care of their families, right? If you can identify yourself as an ingredient whether it's for cooking or for cocktails, what would that ingredient be and why? Oh, you stumped her. Look at that. <laughs> well, it's so many It's so many ways you can go. You, I want to go, do I want to go sweet? Do I want to go savory? Do I want to go whatever? First thing that comes and, to mind. Uh, That's the right answer. I, I, the first thing that comes to mind, and, it's, and I think it's the most, it is the most understated ingredient in the kitchen, and that's white pepper. Ooh. Oh. I, white pepper, it can... It is like can it be the secret ingredient in so many savory dishes, and it's not overpowering like black pepper can be sometimes. And I got into white pepper when I started doing a lot more vegan dishes, and so it just really amps up to me the flavor, particularly like uh, anything that has mushrooms in it uh, along that line. And but white pepper that is it is it is a, it is a under underestimated um, spice. But it it can it can make everything taste so much better. It's something as simple as that. If I had to go something on the sweet side, something more of the spicy spices, I would probably say nutmeg. Ooh, nutmeg's great because you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit. And nutmeg goes into it can go into same dish like quiches. Anything that has a well, you know, chef. Anything that has a high dairy content, a, a dab of nutmeg, and just really just just bloom bloom a flavor profile to me so i use nutmeg in my alfredo yes i use it in my mac and cheese my quiches and it's, it doesn't take a lot you, you don't want to be overpowering but it it can like open up just that flavor profile just like oh i love it <laughs> or white pepper but white right. pepper i white pepper these are great answers, but you are like a delicious like <laughs> topping to the day yes what a wonderful Aww. person you are I love that, and I love your answer. I need to come and check you out, man. I'm I'm sitting in my bar right now. Just get over <laughs> here, cross that river, hey, you, right here. Hey, you know what, Chef? You, you you you. Let me tell you something. My family is coming up for Christmas. Done. And uh, we're coming up for Christmas. We may all uh, come into your bar and shut it down. I'm just saying. My and shut it down. I'm right here. I'm right, I'm never afraid. <laughs> Well, well, cheers. Cheers to that, Aaron. Thank you cheers, so much. Cheers. Thank Happy you. holidays. Happy holidays. You too, ladies. Take care. And don't forget, we want to hear what you have to say. So go do the survey. Yes, yes, I know. I made it rhyme. I'm such a dork. We all already knew that. But anyway, head over to designateddrinker.show, take the survey, and let's hang out at our live virtual Let's Get Twisted Cocktail Hour. Cheers to that. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company that is dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers Bobby and Mike Carducci. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please don't forget to subscribe, download, and review the shows. Your review helps our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.